when did, when did you start coaching at Parramatta and Gray? Well, 19, 1971, after the first year in the Colts, I coached second reserve grade in 1971, and then for various grades. I, I wasn't a great coach. I, I knew the theories and all that sort of thing, but uh, I didn't have the gift for the gab like, like Peter Fenton. Peter Fenton wasn't a good coach because he didn't know much, but he, he was a quick learner and, and he learned and he could relate to the, the players a lot better. But, uh, I, I knew all the theory and all that sort of thing, but I couldn't put it over like Peter did. So I guess looking back now at those days, like in the you were there involved in the club in the '74, when you know um, Parramatta made the grand final and lost that to Randwick. There again in '75 when Parramatta lost to North, and we you know, won it in '77. You now in '85, '86. Um, what what are your special memories about those particular occasions? Anything sticking in mind or? Well, I remember the 74 grand final, uh, within two minutes of the game opening, I know uh, Ray Elliott and uh, Greg Hackett were back in the dressing room getting stitches. It was a pretty rugged game, that one, 74. The Ram Ramwick had a couple of uh, back row forwards there that... Uh, a little bit unscrupulous. Mm. But uh, the, the, the 75 grand final against Norse, well, I don't think it was really fair <laughs> in as much as Norse had a monstrous pack and uh, they, their main object in the game was to create scrums. So they'd get the ball from the scrum and they'd create another scrum. This was to wear us down and, and so, so forth. And they were aided and abetted by the referee. So the, the law said that uh, the halfback had to put the ball in so that it first touched the ground beyond the first feet. Well, the scrums were so low that you couldn't get it in like that. You had to roll it along the ground. Anyhow, and uh, their halfback rolled it along the ground and but Peter Carson. Peter Carson. And uh, Dickie Byers was the referee and after the game I, I was talking to him and uh, I said there was terrific scrums out there. He said, Oh, weren't they great, weren't they great? I said, Yeah. But I said, What about the putting the ball into the scrum? He allowed to roll it along the ground. He said, Oh, what they rolling along the ground? <laughs> I said, oh yeah, 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 rolling all through. He said, uh, oh, I didn't notice that. We weren't like great scrums. So, you know, we, we weren't destined to win that game. Yeah, <laughs> was, I've, I've raised a few issues with Dickie Fires about that game. <laughs> so, <laughs> there were three, three penalties to two penalties. That's it. That's and the last penalty was like two minutes before full time. That's right. Mm -hmm. uh, Frank, just to we just finished talking about the 75 grand final. The 77 grand final that we won uh, were all local local juniors with the exception of uh, Rod Banahan who was teaching PE at uh, North Lead High School and Phil, Phil Clements who was out at uh, Hawkesbury Ag College That's right. as a farm manager. Can you tell us a little bit about that and the role you played in those? Because a lot of those um, juniors you coached at Merrimack's. That's right. Mickey Martin, Martin Knight, well, Bruce Pitt, Greg Bauer, Jeff Morgan, Tony Turner. That's right. There was, or at least eight of them, I think, were, were from Maryland, <laughs> which is a, that that team that went through there. I was particularly interested because that's the one the son played in, and uh, they, well, Mickey Mickey Martin was the halfback there. He he was a bit bit big when he. When he came to came to grade for halfback, so they put him in the centre, and he was a sensation there. But he and Marty Knight were a great combination. And uh, Martin Knight and Ray Price were the only two 
players that I, I know of that could pick the ball up off the ground without losing, could run at full pace, pick the ball up off the ground without losing pace. So they, they had... Because I reckon that's why uh, Martin was picked for the Australian side because he played outside Paul McLean who never passed the ball. Well, and he actually had the best of the hands that for, for ripping or taking the ball off people. Yeah. He just walked, would run up, he didn't tackle him, just rip it off him. That's right. Yeah, that, that'd be right. Because he, he, he was different to Mickey. Mickey just ran, ran through them. I mean, he was power. And, uh, he, a terrific tackler, Mickey. Well, Martin was a good tackler too. They, they were a really good combination. Did Mick actually think about it? Because he'd run into a ruck, decided he didn't want to be there, and then run, run out again. <laughs> Sorry, I, mean, I don't think Mike played with Mick. I, was, I, I think he'd win it, but it was just like, oh. I don't think Mick thought of much at all. He played halfback all his junior days. And I think that was just because he was so powerful, you know. He, he was the first one to the ball, so they never got it. But uh, he, he, he developed into a really good centre, and then when they put him on the wing in the rep, rep teams, everyone said he was too slow. But I can remember playing uh, New South Wales against Country at Milner, and uh, he, he got the ball a couple of times and ran in uh, a couple of tries and I can remember the coach getting up and yelling out, Martin, Martin, you've got to run faster. <laughs> who, was that? who was that coach? Uh, was it was Criddle. Peter Criddle. He was a, I don't know whether he knew Peter Criddle. And he, he, he was a real solicitor character. from Bathurst. That's he all did, I know. He was a real character. He, he was a very good sense of humour. And I think... He was just rubbing it into the critics. But, uh, they were, they were all really, now that he, uh, of course he came from Parramatta, I don't think people from Sydney Uni and those clubs thought he could run at all. But uh, I think Mickey showed them he could. He, he scored some good, good tries for the Wallabies. So would, would, would Martin, would, how would you rate him as a, as a centre, one of the best players, like you just spoke about Ray? Did you've seen, or I mean, as a you know, we went died early with leukemia. Yeah, I, I think Martin, Martin was exceptional. He he had real skills. It was a great pity he, he went to Argentina with the Wallabies, and he did, didn't didn't play with his usual. Ability there, and he, he came back and tried to start the season with Parramatta, and he just couldn't do it. That's when they were diagnosed with le leukemia. It was a terrible thing, really, right in his prime. And, uh, you know, within 12 months, he, he was right out of things with. Uh, Terrible, uh, the one so young. I think Marty, well, he played test in Brisbane against the Welsh, where he, he really showed his his class. But he didn't get that many, that many opportunities. Um, seventy nine, we had the seventy nine grand final when we we got thumped by Ramwick in the wind and chose to run into the whip there, yeah, running. Yeah. Run into the wind as opposed. I thought we could win that. We 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 beaten them three times in the season. It was well. You can't you can't just blame the wind, but it was the fact that there was a a really strong wind behind Randwick in the first half. We came out to run with it in the second half, but unfortunately it reversed, and we were running into it in the second half. We were never really in that game at any stage. I think the Ellers were the difference. Were the difference. They they made all the all the breaks for Randwick. Um, we we were disadvantaged by the uh, by the elements, but 
I think Ben probably would have won anyhow, but uh, well, unfortunate. They ran some points up. And yeah. in 84, the team of midgets that played down at uh, Concord. Yes. They they, against Ramby again. Well, Ramby scored four tries that day, and every one was from forward pass. <laughs> They're not buyers, Frank. No, they're not buyers. <laughs> but that's a fact. <laughs> in 85? 85, at the sports ground. Very dour. Dour game there. Was, what was it, 11 10 or something like that? Very, not much in it at all. I think uh, Neil Cap kicked a goal from, from near the sideline at halfway made the difference. He couldn't kick them in front, but he, <laughs> he could kick them from there. <laughs> uh, I, I remember uh, the, the timekeeper, uh, Jenkins, uh, and his son played, uh, he, he was timekeeping, and I, I, I think he, he gained us a minute of full time to get that penalty, <laughs> that was the difference. But uh, <coughs> 76 was a different matter. That, that uh, 86. Uh, 86 was a different matter. Uh, it was, was clinical that game. Yeah. And that's, yeah. They, they had, I forgot how many internationals around we in that too. Well, there were quite a number. One of them was David Knox. <coughs> and uh, Neil Cat tackled him in the first five minutes, carried him back 10 yards. <laughs> and dumped him and we never had any trouble from David Knox all, through, all the game after that and I think that was there was two games uh, Neil Cat won for us but <laughs> King, P King Peasy didn't play either they, he was he, he was blotted out of the game too. that's that's right yeah now on on paper they should have wiped the floor with us but uh, it didn't happen that way it was a very you know it was a decisive win that one yeah at the uh, 80, 86 grand final was a decisive victory. I think it, it was a team of locals, apart from uh, the winger and the number eight. But uh, it was, I think, if you spoke to Paul Dalton, he'd say that was uh, that was his greatest win. So uh, 85 was a good win, but 86. No doubt about it.